Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one-stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. Today, I have a great ML researcher and a good friend, Saradip, with me. About Saradip, he has done his bachelor's from Jadavpur University. Then he did his master's from ISI Kolkata, where he was a batch topper. And then he spent some time in the industry where he worked with Walmart Labs, doing some cutting-edge research in e-commerce and retail industry. And post that, from last 2.5 years or so, he is pursuing his PhD from University of Maryland, uh, US. So welcome, welcome, Saradip, to the channel. Yeah, hi, hi. thanks, Abhishek, and uh, thanks for the introduction. Welcome, welcome. So, Saradip, uh, how is your PhD journey going? How is your research life going? What are you researching on? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think... Uh... These are very, uh, like, all all are very nice questions and very different. It needs some very detailed answers. But I think uh, to summarize, I would say that PhD is, uh, is going good so far. I have made some good collaborations across different uh, universities, uh, like, apart from other than University of Maryland, like University of uh, Central Florida and then uh, Princeton and also like across uh, good uh, industries like JP Morgan, Amazon, DeepMind, etc. So there are uh, like good collaborations that I have made. And then uh, there are some very interesting topic that I'm currently working on, which is more around. So I started, so while I started my PhD on reinforcement learning and, um, and now uh, I am focusing a little bit on reinforcement learning from human feedback, which has also bought a lot of uh, which has gained a lot of attention uh, due to the success of chat gpt so yeah things are going okay and good you can say now things are going great it sounds <laughs> <coughs> and uh, so yeah. like if we look at your career so far you have done your studies from one of the finest universities then you worked from one of the best industry which is walmart labs and now you are doing your uh, research from one of the finest university in uh, US and also as you told you are doing collaboration across universities. So what would be your advice for someone who wants to follow a similar uh, trajectory or who is inspired from your research journey and wants to follow a similar path? Uh, I, thanks. Uh, thanks for the question again and thanks for mentioning that that uh, these things. But uh, first first of all, I want to say that uh, uh, if if somebody has not got into let's say one of the like top university according to ranking there is no issue in that there is no no stopping and i have so many good friends of mine who are uh, who have done their bachelors from uh, reasonable uh, in universities but they are doing uh, very very good in their career so it, it is all, always possible to to shift or i would say to to do good things and it, this is not a necess necessity because because you know right in india uh, it's so much competitive like there are there is a huge population and there are only limited uh, popular in the uh, universities and all so i think that is very important that uh, at least if you are motivated you should you should uh, do and these things so it it's not needed that uh, we we get affiliated to one of the universities it's always better I'll, I'll mention some points why it is better, but uh, but but if even if it is not, I would I, I would also say some points that how how to we can how how they can do. So so first of all, like how to uh, like uh, so anyways, like for for the affiliation part to get into good universities, we know there are some standard exams and uh, like IIT, ISI, Joint, WBJ, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you can uh, like try to get into those institutes. The advantage of these institutes is like you will be uh, you will be teaching uh, like being taught by like very very good professors ac across the country at least in India they are one of the best and even I think in in, in they are considered very good across uh, uh, globally uh, so they, there are a lot of good professors which with whom you can work work with and uh, so that that will give you a lot of good exposure and and give you very good problem statements to work with. Because that is the something that we do not know from the beginning, right? So that is something. And then the second thing is you will be, uh, if you are in a very good institute, the one, another thing that is give like that you will get is a top class peer, right? Like you you will be amongst very good people who are also equally motivated, willing to learn. So you and also you will be challenged at every point, like. 
okay uh, why you are doing this what is the motivation lot of questions discussion so so these are the, some of the key institutes uh, like key key advantages of uh, from being from very good colleges because a lot of good students are there so this is other than the brand name because other than i think there are things like okay there this xyz companies come to recruit in this colleges so these are the things so these are the main advantages that probably some some i received but on the other hand if a student uh, could not uh, go into this kind of things i would uh, highly recommend uh, like any and if he or she is really motivated in this field or in ml or in general i would recommend that there are a lot of open source tutorials open source courses like and there are a lot of knowledge sharing platforms like you are doing that is a great thing that you are doing thanks for this service to the community i i really i really feel this is a great thing because uh, this will help a lot of uh, this kind of students uh, and there are so many of this for example professors from stanford berkeley princeton they have also open sourcing in the, and it is available in youtube so so th that should be properly utilized and even like nptel is anyways always available uh, there are good lectures from professors from let's say uh, I, i can uh, like i can always say that there are good lectures from professor ravindran on rl and then there are uh, other others on vision lot lot of this kind of things are there already on uh, social media like on youtube type of things so that should be properly utilized and open source more open source contributions and i think that that can help them completely agree I, even i keep saying that that uh, it's not like our times when we were starting with ml there used to be one course of andrew ng <laughs> just one course yeah. now yeah. there are so many courses available and as well as compute has been democratized you get free gpu uh, from this google collab or kaggle notebook that you can yes. utilize to uh, learn things and on top of it even the industries they expose their data in forms of data set in kaggle or some other so github and all so we can even use the industry data set to try out our algorithms completely agree with exactly. you founders exactly hmm. but still saradeep tell me what's the difference between doing a phd or masters from us university versus top indian premium institutes mm hmm hmm okay uh, maybe uh, there might be some bias in my answers because it's like coming from individual opinion and there will definitely be bias but i'll try to say some some points which i have heard and which i have thought and this this might be an issue i feel that uh, at least in the us when we are doing uh, the phd uh, in from a very good institute and uh, and we are working so the main main the biggest problem is that the biggest advantage is that we are being exposed uh, to the best problems or the most cutting edge problems like okay these are the problems that that will be solved or these are the problems because the here the lot of industries are there like who who are actually for example open ai has like if one agrees or not but open ai has actually revolutionized a lot of things like chat gpt uh, did wonders to be to be honest and uh, even with uh, diffusion models and this uh, vlms coming into place so th there is a lot of questions that that has been opened up so for for academia and also for industry for researchers this is a great venue so that's why now people have like even academia are trying to get good compute they are like for example princeton has a huge compute umd also has good compute so there are a lot of universities which are trying to get compute which are trying to tackle this this kind of very cutting edge questions uh, so that like it's all about like who solves them first uh, from which so for example i i'll just give a quick example and that there was some some work that was happening around detection like whether we can detect ai generated content or not so so umd was leading in that in that aspect we all are like i i also did some work uh, which was like uh, i think it shows that possibilities of detection from an information theoretic perspective so so all these things were there and and what happened was it it got a lot of attention got a lot of citations so this this kind of cutting edge if you do it it always it's like it, it's it's like that those times that you feel okay this is where world is and you are doing something contributing some so you feel much more motivated surrounded by people whereas i think in some other countries or maybe uh, like even in india there there might be some places who are still doing that but i still 
think that there is a lot of little bit of laid back at least that people are much more relaxed that okay it's fine we can do which is fine which is great there is no issue but sometimes what happens is uh, it might lose out on the motivation side for students because and also i feel that uh, there are like in in us if you see like lot of uh, teams they do research uh, even they are doing doing theory research they know what is the application perspective of it where where i will apply why i am doing this math but i feel in some places if like even in india maybe i have seen or at least i what i have heard is that they, they it's like if you are doing some analysis uh, mathematically many a times you are just uh, working on that algebra you do not know what is happening every line should have a meaning right every line should have an impact and as long as the real world impact is not shown uh, students also sometimes feel that okay i mean why like okay we are doing this and also that happens is like the students get too much involved into math and they they are always working on the nitty gritty bits of math and not understanding the broader picture so i feel this this two three things are around this two three things are very important and one critical thing is that in us there are so many uh, universities so many professors and i think in a lot but in india also there are but given the population i feel it is it is not enough uh, so there should be more uh, em- emphasis given on um, on this kind of research topics and more professors should be brought and i think more research should happen but yeah mm, completely agree and there is one professor in making already <laughs> yeah hopefully <laughs> let's see <laughs> so i have two follow up questions like as you were speaking a uh, few things came to my mind one was that i completely agree it happens that new ideas or new things are originating in us it may be mm-hmm. there that some a few of it is happening in india also but like majority of things are originating in us so what do you think can be uh, the reason and what can be you already told about it that good professors good researchers but what else can be done so that that uh, discovery originates in india as well yeah i think uh, uh, like this is like a little I, i'll be a little informal here maybe this because these might not be the right things and also i would say think that uh, some reasons uh, is also like see it's a little i would i would say little some things to think about that there are a lot of indians also who are doing the discovery in us <laughs> so so it's it's so so i feel that environment plays a big role your colleagues your cohort plays a big role and maybe there is a lot of motivation that i can see in us it's i would say little bit aggression as well like for example if you get a research idea like the friends try to say that okay let's work on it thoroughly and let's try to at least put it in archive and see like if you see that uh, the, it has both pro- pros and cons of course but i think in, i think in, a, in especially in phd when you are doing or let's say in a, you are doing very hardcore research it's there is not a lot of motivation other than this so because monetarily it is a little bit low and uh, every everything there is not a lot of motivation the only motivation you get is if you can do something good work which gets recognition which gets value so and that can only happen if you submit that work or if you if you send that work so so that's why that aggression is there whereas this kind of things i feel is, are missing from a lot of other places and also i feel another thing is that lot of industrial centers research centers are there like for example open ai is here there is a huge deep mind there is uh, microsoft research amazon research so all the research problems are somehow it will come from industry only like the cutting edge problems for example chat gpt is made now let's work on privacy security robustness blah blah so i i think that one one potential interest can be if there are some centers in india as well so it will also attract a lot of lot of good like phd's or a lot of good researchers like who want to do some let's say more research or more uh, little more or around cutting edge things and all so maybe these kind of things if it happens let's say open ai opens a center or let's say microsoft research uh, like broadens its center and i think in general also more more value needs to be given to this kind of things like what are important what will eventually dominate this world right so if if those kind of things needs to be changed i think even in india there there is a possibility that lot of people will stay that yeah yeah i was able to relate to it with slightly different context uh, like mm. 
as someone who has now worked for an mnc and a startup it's the people remain the same but culture is speed and mm-hmm. motivation that makes the difference and i am able to like relate to it yes yes i think you you are a very good person to relate to it and also i think relate to different uh, another answer that i also discussed like because bef- before even when you are at walmart uh, you have worked a lot on uh, on different problems and and you also try to explore the like how it can be applied and what are its what there are a lot of challenges on that side also so so i think that this the, but this gives a lot of motivation why why to do this and how to do this so this broad picture i feel once you join the industry it, it is but if you see in research there is like it it might be little bit missing for many many uh, researchers so so that is a very important also yeah correct I, like if you have uh, found something intriguing putting it to a completion like like in industry what happens we scale it many mm-hmm. people are using it but in research it can happen some idea evolved some paper was published and that's it like nothing more was done yeah. on top of it <laughs> yeah completion is very important like what because there are a lot of interesting research questions that happens during sales, uh, scaling also which Correct. one should know or understand and basically this algorithm design should be based on that mm-hmm. then only it will be effective in that way one more follow up question on sorodeep on the one of the answers that you gave little before that you were working on detection task that whether that content has been generated from an ai model or not or mm-hmm. so uh, mm-hmm. one thing one doubt i always had was suppose you have trained a uh, uh, model on let's say chat gpt is data whether this is generated from chat gpt or human but mm-hmm. now there are multiple models there is llama there is falcon there are tons of open source model will that um uh, detection technique work for any open source model or you will have to do a specific training per uh, mm-hmm. that per model or will it be a generic mm-hmm. yeah i think this is a very good point and uh, yeah they 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 basically the, uh, okay let, like i'll try to explain this from a little more like from like going little more depth into the question so there are different ways of detection so one detection method is what you are saying is of, of like training a classifier and then using some text that comes to detect where, like basically the classifier is predict which which is it machine or human generated so in that case like we have to ensure that during training there should be uh, like when i'm uh, making the data set there should be data set like there should be uh, basically dip machine generated data from all the this kind of models because if you see that if it is not there and and let's say the llama's two's generation is has a distribution shift with its with its own class in the training set then there might be issues like it it might do spurious uh, predictions to predict it as the human generated so but if we can have uh, data sets from all the this kind of machines different type of uh, let's say chat gpt and whichever are the sota things or maybe we can create a separate detect uh, this kind of things for that but yeah eventually if we can have a classifier which has all from this much different uh, m- open source model and then there is humans data and then train a classifier then ideally it will nullify the variance across that and somehow it will be robust to that is is the expectation so so that that is one one potential solution but uh, i think that that's not a very good solution to to handle this and i feel that at least watermarking produces a reasonably better solution to do this which we are working towards and like yeah that's hmm. so something. so can you talk about it or you it's yeah, yeah. i can i can be, i can at least discuss the the broad watermarking yeah, yeah, briefly, yes yeah so so what happens is like in watermarking it is it is a very interesting thing it's in general that uh, in in general because uh, why it is interesting okay it is because like when you have an image it is very easy to think of watermark right you put you put your signature or you put a stamp but now when you have a text how do you put a signature you if you just add some let's say some weird signals or some this can be easily just erased right that's the so so there are some uh, like some researchers and even umd is one of them who, who did a very interesting way of designing a watermark is like it's like um, you you kind of manipulate the the distribution over the words so what i mean is 
So in, in an LLMs, how the generation works is like if you have a word one, then it, it basically predicts the next next word based on the distribution over the over the next next tokens, right? Now, what if I, I make the vocabulary into two parts based on a key? key. Let's say I, I know some key based on which I, I, I create a random seed based on which, which partitions my vocabulary into two halves, green list and red list, right? Now, let's say I ensure. So now for, for generating the next word, I ensure that my machine generates the word from the green list and never from the red list. Right. And I do this for every word. So naturally, you can think that uh, this sentence that will be generated will be a little bit or it might be more also, but it will be hindered in quality. Like it will generate a little bit weird things. But that is the cost of watermarking. But interestingly, if you see now, it, it is like uh, if I know the seed and I know because I, I am I have I am watermarked, so I know this. So exactly, you can count the number of words at green list word. And then it is just like a binomial thing, right? Binomial distribution, the number of uh, this thing, and it should be greater than uh, n by two, if n is the length, right? Uh, for So basically what I mean is that since we are, we, it's it's like ensured that there is a very high probability with which you can guarantee that this, there will be, uh, so, so the intuition is that if human generates this, like, or human writes this, then they, basically he, he or she will use a lot of words from the dead list because that's the natural thing. But in the machine case, there will be no word from the red list. So basically by counting the number of words for coming from the red list, you can actually separate the human and machine with very high confidence. So this is exactly what watermarks does in exactly. There is nothing more, nothing less. So, and this has been very successful and OpenAI is also in, incorporating them to be Got as, it. as at least that is what the news is. Got it. But again, the challenge will be here. Uh, if the text is generated from OpenAI, we'll be able to generate. But if someone takes that model, does one level of fine tuning, then again, it will, uh, yeah, yeah. Further yeah. Yeah. Of, yes, yes, of course. Like if, if there is a different model, let's say some model, which is Mm, which is not watermarked and let's say somebody is using but the intuition is that like uh, there can be mm, there can be different models but to maintain the quality of open ai it would be very hard yes. <laughs> because mm -hmm. there's a lot of cost on human feedback rlh etc etc which is so basically they will anyway suffer in quality but then those might be hard to detect got it got it yeah that's Awesome. Like audience would have learned one new technique, which is watermarking and they can use some ideas from it to implement something of their own as well. For sure. And I would say that I also want to give an information that there is a Kaggle competition going on in this kind of uh, text generated AI generated text detection and, and uh, do look out for them and, uh, and uh, who are interested to participate because it is like even open AI is very interested. So you might get hired. So we never know. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, the true learning happens when this theory is combined with practical. So if you learn about some concept and you apply it on some data set, then you will actually uh, learn about things. What happens like when you just understand the theory, you feel you have, you have known it now, but when you start doing the practical, then is when you actually understand whether you have actually understood it or not. <laughs> yes. 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 So That's are, a very, very yeah. good point. Very important point. Yeah. Yeah. Please. please yeah. And uh, one more question around the research and PhD journey. What kind of opportunities do you think PhD unfolds, which is a bit harder uh, to achieve with a good bachelor's or master's? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. To be, okay. Uh, again, again, I would first answer it neutrally. So in, uh, from a neutral perspective, or many people will say that uh, there is nothing that PhD gives you other than the, and if, if a good bachelor's, at least a very good master's will definitely have equal knowledge, equal depth, equal understanding. So, so that that is and 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 I think in a lo lot of ways things are merging now, like because because of this huge open source things, like there are a lot of engineers and a lot of good uh, developers who are contributing a lot in terms of open source, and they are also doing equally important work as PhD. So that 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 is this this difference is somehow it's blooding like this line, but on the other hand, it's not uh, like it's not just about the the work. There are a lot of other things that PhD gives, I feel, I feel. 
it's it's that that uh, like in phd the thing is that uh, you you will you you try to tackle some problems which are generally hard or open problems and you have to keep on with it because during my ms like i can just solve some part of it or make take a quick problem or this kind of things but in phd you have to keep on with it so it gives you a different mindset it gives you a mindset of not losing the task or not leaving hope or some some sort of optimism i would say that you keep on it will come solution will come so keeping on with a problem with a hard problem and eventually solution will come is very 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 crucial then phd uh, then another thing that you get is very good research collaboration that okay uh, like there are a lot of universities lot of who are doing in depth research and and i i would i would emphasize that this depth thing is very 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 important be it practical be it theoretical rigorous research something is that that uh, at least i and many many people learned during their phd that that you have to be very very rigorous like even if we are doing experiments it should be very thorough because if you see that in during industries also we if we solve our problem like the problem that is uh, let's say whatever the problem that business wants it is i think it is fine to a reasonable amount then we can slowly slowly debug or while scaling and those things but we did we do not need to show in a multiple data sets analyze a lot of statistical analysis those things are not that critical but here i think at least from a academic perspective these things are very interesting like you can do a lot of analysis lot of statistical analysis lot of plots visualize and get some understanding same same, same thing in theory in theory like uh, theoretical analysis which i had not done gives you a different flavor gives you a different perspective to look at problems so these are i feel basically it it horizons like it broadens your horizon and it gives you different perspective to look at the problem which is very beautiful according to me other than just the solving the problem so so i would say these are some of the key points definitely definitely that's why people have huge respect for phd scholars <laughs> yeah yeah i think another big reason is because people are uh, like <laughs> going for some like which there is a huge disparity right in payment <laughs> <Correct>. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> it needs courage and patience <laughs> yeah yeah it's it needs too much courage and patience for sure yeah and uh, so the when you were talking about the collaboration how do you reach out to universities or teammates for collaboration outside yeah. your college yeah 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 actually it depends on on uh, uh, some it depends on different lab to lab how the culture of the lab or the university is i would say collaboration is very 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 crucial like it it because again it 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 gives you new perspective new flavors from which how your advisor works how your friend works or how your colleagues work that is one thing but eventually when you are how how your research or how your ideas are taken into different university by different university professors like and and how are they taking it and so it gives you different uh, feedback and we know that uh, with feedback we can improve different diverse feedback right there are a lot of papers also which shows that uh diverse feedback can improve uh, the quality of the learning agent so so this these are crucial very very crucial and how do we do that is sometimes many a times what happens the faculty reaches out and they have the faculty have friends who who maybe let's say you get stuck somewhere and the faculty is also thinking okay uh, i'm not sure maybe we can consult somebody so that is one way that is the most uh, that is the most common way to do sometimes you can also reach like if you know somebody th- that okay he is very good or she or she is very good in this thing so you can just reach to that person and ask that okay and then be a collaborator and this things uh, and many a times and then there are industry things also like while while you go to an intern when you work with an industry folk and then they can be a part of the research and these things happen but uh, yeah i think i think in academia there is a lot lot scope of collaboration and uh, this thing got it got it now talking about some interesting uh, things that is the movement from ai to agi that happened with uh, this llms and chat gpts uh, what's your views what are your views on it and also one more thing that uh, people say that what keeps open ai ahead of its competitors is the mature training process which includes uh, reinforcement mm-hmm. learning rlhf so tell us about uh, this rlhf like what is it how it works what's so interesting about it 
yeah so so i think yeah uh, one thing is that that uh, there are a lot of terms that are used and uh, uh, something is called like agi or artificial general intelligence and there are there, i think there are a lot of definitions has arisen because of that which i also do not understand and i do not know many of things because like you have to read a lot of Uh, like initial papers who termed uh, who coined these terms and why they coined it so which i have not yet read but at least from a very superficial level i can tell that agi or any uh, uh, the purpose is that there should be some general intelligence that the machine has gained like like human or like babies at least that ha- and and this has this has very close connection to at least they can they can uh, maybe not do something very stupid and not do something very weird mistakes or maybe they can plan uh, so 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 these are some of the things but there are a lot of other features also but eventually what we want is that there should be some sort of human level of intelligence and now coming back to open ai and rlhf so maybe op- so one thing which we have seen in open ai and also i think which you you will also appreciate is that uh, op- like open ai was doing rl long back like it started to rl when nobody cared about rl so like you know, people think that okay it's just some con- concept and 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 there was a strong group of theory people who were just doing the analysis and trying to trying to uh, move the horizon there but open ai what they did is that they said okay that there is rl problems let's create a platform and they made gym right and you see the vision right they had this vision from so long back when nobody cared about these things so people were just solving maze maze environments at that time so so th- this this uh, they created this uh, platform and then they they then there were a lot of experiments then then again when they realized that language will be very important they they moved to language they made uh, then they made uh, multimodal things clip also i think is open ai's then they then they again moved and all those so they they have been doing like i would say that the team is very visionary it's a very very visionary team and they are and they have a strong focus to production to make it large scale things which which i do not see from like people other companies are following to be at least to me i might be wrong but i see a lot of and what openai has an advantage is that they made chat gpt uh, this ui right and we know that the importance of ui the people are much more uh, friendly like people are much more if it is very user friendly it, people will use it and the biggest gain is human feedback right like if you and they are way way ahead of other companies now in terms of human feedback they have huge huge input of humans on this on their product so that that will differentiate them and that is differentiating them also if you see there there is no not yet a product that has come of the level of chat gpt i have not evaluated them and evaluations are hard but at least from a from a user's perspective i would say that it's it's not even close to this and adelhf i i i think um, i'll i'll spend some time next in this discussing this but what i want to say is that it's a uh, that uh, that op- this uh, language models have been there from long back right when we were working at walmart 2018 19 this was there right bird uh, and all these things came the hype was there but uh, if you see that uh, even we we have seen like d- d- in our retrieval when we when we used to do this kind of ranking and all it used to do okay not that something great or even for simple things also it was not that great it did there was a boost i would say there was a huge boost by using self supervised learning for llms and all because of this self attention but it was there from 2018 19 so but but the boost the significant boost came with reinforcement learning from human feedback and and the the performance that this this kind of a let's say much more sensible behavior of chat gpt if you if you interact with it now you, you will be sur- like we'll, we are i'm surprised like it it is it does really really good and of course like now people can say that we can replace rl or we can replace a human feedback with ai feedback but now these things are not uh, that important but at that point of time it was very very significant because language models i always say it was there from 2018 19 and yeah now on rl rl uh, hf so i i will i will maybe i will i'll also share some some small uh, 
uh, very small um, perspective on that and at least at least a high level high level picture and maybe let let me just quickly share my screen and just uh, open the famous open ais rlhf diagram so this is a very uh, famous uh, this is one of my slides and maybe i can share some part of it but this is a very this is a very uh, famous picture from open ai which kind of discuss the it discusses the 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 rlhf frame broad framework so so i'll try to explain it so to what happens so what happens is that this the the, the broad framework of rlhf is like this okay that so we uh, they realized open ai realized that there is a lot of information and human preferences that like there is a lot of data that can be used for improving the performance of llms or improving the performance of rl and and let's consider that in this way so let's say you start with a policy now now when i'm saying a policy just think that policy as a language model that when when you give a prompt it generates a summary right so that, that so that is a policy let's say in that in the llm context so now the policy is a language model so you start with a policy you collect trajectory so what do i mean by trajectory is like for for a prompt for multiple prompts you collect different preferences different different data like summaries basically then what you do is you give those summaries to to a human to an expert who who gives you some sort of preferences like okay for let's say the simplest case is for every prompt you give two pairs okay you generate two pairs and then you give it to human the human labels it that which is better and then it, and then you collect this for all the prompt and then using some parameterized reward function you learn the reward function and then you train the policy with that reward function so these are the broad three steps of our lhf like so so from 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 more language perspective it is exactly this that you use either multiple language model or one language model to generate multiple answers per prompt give this to for evaluation then the human judges it then you train a reward model in the second stage by this log sigma and reward difference which is nothing but a cross entropy loss for uh, for which people are used for by like logistic regression or any classification and then and then basically what the objective of the reward model is now after training whenever you have a prompt and whenever you have a summary the reward model will tell tell you how good it is with respect to that human who has labeled it and then you train a policy with ppo so i'm not going too much into this details but it is just like you are training in your favorite rl algorithm when you know this reward now you know this reward you train so this is this is the broad broad story of rlhf which has given so much uh, hype and so much into this field that and there is significant research going going on in this field now significant i would say got it got it and uh, like in that ppo that um, exploration exploitation also happens so that it learns even to give interesting answers right. times right yes 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 so i think the advantage of the a big advantage of rl is that it it does exploration and because of exploration it can it it, it actually can give a lot of nice and more in, interesting answers which probably if you do with standard learning it it might not and that that is an edge because if you see that in all these papers it has clearly shown that how rl does better than imitation learning or supervised fine tuning methods so got it got it so it's like uh, first of all there is this human annotated question answers there one level of yes. fine tuning will happen then how the humans are labeling uh, giving the quality of the answer that is trained mm -hmm. in a reward model and on top of it we do exploration exploitation to find the best reward yes, yes. Uh, to find this policy yes yes best policy correct and in that policy the weights will be tuned yes 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 it's like a, it's like a, Uh, basically one can think of as simple as doing fine tuning mm -hmm. with with rl basically rather than yeah. simply uh, gradient descent mm -hmm. exactly exactly and uh, interestingly when this sam altman episode happened of him getting out of the board uh, yeah. and coming <laughs> back as ceo one thing that came out very strongly was some people were saying that they have discovered some something called q star learning which is the next mm. level of which will provide the next level to reinforcement learning and next level to this kind of models so like what is this q star yeah. learning and what are your views on it 
Yeah, see, I, I would say that I do not have a lot of views unless the report or technical report or uh, paper comes out because I have seen a lot of people saying a lot of random things. Mm-hmm. Okay, but one thing at least which I see from Twitter is that they say Q star is some sort of combination of uh, Q learning and A star. A star search. But... <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, so it's it's some combination of Q learning and A star algorithm. Yeah, yeah A star. Mm-hmm. But I am not very sure because there is no technical report or paper. So mm-hmm. I would say let's not speculate because mm-hmm. why to speculate and things. But yeah, at least they were saying that Q star is there and they they were able to solve a lot of hard math questions and puzzles mm-hmm. which were not solved by mm-hmm. chat GPT. Mm-hmm. If you see chat GPT uh, lags behind in, in different type of mathematical understanding. So so that that's something that is quite I'm looking forward to because I feel that if there is something added to it, uh, which I which I am thinking it will be, so there is more for us who are working on RL to do some understanding and foundations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, when you started your PhD and research work, ChatGPT was not there, and it came in the, uh, in between. Yeah. So did you ever yeah. say that you made a right decision going into the research? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a very good question. And I think uh, at least you somehow know that like, t- to some extent, you know, right, like that we, I was mainly working on some deep learning, NLP and vision and this type of things. And and to be honest, I had I had zero knowledge of RL, zero. Like we have, I have never done anything. I was very interested, but we did not do because there it was not required. I think I remember that you were taking some initiative to organize some talks on RL and we were doing something, but there was no concrete thing. And I have never worked on RL to be honest, but I felt that when I'm, when I'm using these dedicated years, like I am spending some dedicated years, I should spend on, on some, something which is very fundamental, which requires knowledge of optimization, which mm-hmm. re- requires statistics and probability. And I feel the field that, that requires that is RL. So even if I, if I feel reluctant, I have to do math. I have to do, uh, experiments and I have to do a lot of, of fundamental things, which, which will eventually like, which, which will uh, make me learn something. Mm-hmm. So that's why I chose this path. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is not the path I would say ideal to, for other people, because, uh, it, it is not the <laughs> ideal thing, but uh, you have to give a lot of effort, a lot of effort. But, uh, then the good thing that happens is like, also another another field i was interested to explore it was causality because i feel that is also something which is very fundamental and it has a lot to it so i, I think these are the two fields that i feel are very 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 crucial i feel and because it it, it this kind of things are applied to real world like basically it's not just limited to imagenet or imdb it has much more like genomics or uh, discovery of drugs understanding explainability in true sense and then like even in, in, in this different kind of alpha, alpha folding, like protein unfolding, etc. I feel it has two real life applications rather than a very uh, ML-ish uh, style of uh, things. So that's that that I would say I would consider my fortune <laughs> that this happened. And then I see that this LLMs and RL are combined, which is, I, I would say, the best thing for me to happen. Completely agree. And from my experience, like post our Walmart days, uh, I have... Uh, once I moved to Misho, which is a startup, uh, def- as you said, this causality and uplift modeling has de- has actually uh, gained a lot of popularity. Company like Instagram and Wayflare, they are using uplift modeling to next mm-hmm. level. Like Instagram, the notification which comes, right? They are not sending notification all the time or fixed number of notification. They are only sending when they mm-hmm. feel that there is will be an uplift in uh, user interaction or user uh, uh, user time spent on that then only they will send the notification and we are also using uplift modeling at a lot of uh, yes. e-commerce tasks and i remember like we were talking about reinforcement learning at that time at that time and even now most of us have used in industry in some form of mab multi arm bandit either the epsilon yes. greedy thomson sampling yes. or upper yes. confidence yes. bound but the the real like uh, or better sophisticated way of using it will be in these LLM models, training them, yes, yes, them yes. better and all the Very good. yeah protein folding and all those uh, trickier tasks that you talked about. Yes, yes. Very, very good point. Yeah, this is this is a very good point. And and, and this is so good, right? Like that actually two, two things are started to being explored. So we will be able to solve real problems because 
I feel that uh, deep learning in general, uh, it's 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 more of curve fitting, and neural network like more it more more does that like how to fit any any like you give a data points it fit any curve, yeah. but but eventually I think it it that is not the solution like because I always feel the hope is where that uh, the a baby human baby does not need hundred data points of putting his hat hand on to fire and <laughs> not hand to fire to understand that we should not put hands to fire right it understands the physics it understands the information of the system it understands how environment works world works and then it kind of does this thing so so it should not be directly that and as you are correctly saying that uh, we uh, there is has been more multi arm bandit applications understood but now eventually slowly rl is being uh, explored to this kind of big problems is is beautiful and i think this is a great time to be in this field mm -hmm. so that's that's what i would say to all the pe <laughs> you people who will be listening to us and and this is a very 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 good time to be in this field mm -hmm. uh, so so there's like a similar question on uh, the line that we were discussing and as well as this will be the last question uh, sure and i think this is a very important question as well because you me we have been in the field for some time we have seen the field evolve but someone who is now coming to the field like who wants to start in the field there is lot of things to digest and mm -hmm. one thing that disappoints me a bit is that statistics mathematics these have taken a back seat and people are getting attracted mm -hmm. towards ai deep learning language models and so on and it can happen that uh, they lose on the fundamentals if they directly jump on these things but yeah you can't say that don't jump on these things because these are the fancy things these are the things which are evolving yeah. so uh, what would be your suggestion to someone who is getting started in the field at this current time yes yes yeah i think uh, all your questions have been really really very good and directed and i feel this is a very crucial question and even if let's say our time exceeds i will spend some more time to explain this and to make the users and the at least the uh, learners who are beginning to understand this importance it's like that uh, Uh, that foundations are very important like we we cannot ignore uh, like for example let, let let's let's start with this thing that it's like even for me right i i am i was not i i was from an engineering background so it's not like i was a very big mathematician or statistician or anything i had done applied statistics during my masters but it's not like but i always knew that this is important i do not know but that does not mean that i ignore the fact that this is important and this is critical so i cannot build a house without uh, having the foundations we know that so so i would say to all the learners who are all let's say who are studying in college and all at least like you have very good understanding and try to get very good understanding of some basic con 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 concepts like at least expectation conditional expectation and if possible if possible i am i think in lot of engineering colleges it is not possible but get some lectures and and try to understand it from a little bit more from a measure theoretic view like how how this what is a measure how how the traditional notions of probability is and and then also some understanding of how analysis is done then what how do we formulate an optimization problem what does solution mean like for example we all know that let's say in optimization or constraint optimization let's say we analyze the kkt condition or we what what are the importance of this kkt condition what what it gives so i i i want to like mention that i am i do not know all these things also but i know that these are very important if you have to do really you want to contribute to this field to its real sense you you also need this this foundations very clear so so you need to have your this kind of subjects this this at least math like basically specifically optimization stat and probability calculus and linear algebra uh, this things very very clear so i would say that and also if on top of this like the most important things are stat optimization Uh, these are the two most important things so so i think I, because this or anyways needs the other background so these are very important and also equally important is that you should be familiar with one programming language because you you are good in this fun, fun, fundamentals which is good but then you do not know how to implement your algorithm that's little bit tricky now with chat gpt and all you will get a lot of help so uh, so i would say that uh, i don't consider that as any bad thing like you you should take help if it is already available but you should know the fun, like roots of coding like how why it is happening what what is happening what is this error so that you can quickly do 
again i am not the best person in that but i i am learning slowly uh, but but this is something that i want to emphasize that everybody uh, should should at least try to do this now another like aspect of it is that in this rising thing like if people are already having implemented diffusion models and those implementations are available in practice right why should one go because that is already av- av- available just understand that what i have realized is even like everybody works like that initially but what i have realized is to understand these things fully and to make some new contributions to this you need to have this kind of statistical understanding it else it is very hard else we can just do very superficial level of contribution to be having a real contribution we need to understand the math and understand the crux of code as well so both are very important and uh, but uh, because if you do not know how to sample from a distribution then the entire picture of generative model is very weird to you like because everything started from that you have a distribution you can sample new points right which is more like which is not in your training set so maybe let just to explain like let's say you have some 10 data points and you fit a likelihood to learn a best like whatever the best gaussian you can learn you learn now you if you have learned the correct gaussian who which represents the data generating process that has generated those 10 points then you can understand right you have an access to infinite points now which fall in the distribution and that is the entire story of generative modeling so now because of high dimensional you do representation learning auto encoders uh, diffusion models blah 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 uh, but but the in the bigger picture is that that you generate from sample from a uh, distribution right so this is this is the crux so there are so all these things fall under a very simple uh, statistical or probabilistic understanding which is very very crucial so please don't ignore that and also interestingly if you see any big researcher who are doing great now just choose them and go to their phd thesis then you will understand what is the importance like just like for example let's say sebastian bubek who is doing great or we know who like the legends in our field like michael jordan or any or like people like them or maybe professor mengdi or pro- like any anyone like tom goldstein from umd like there will be a lot of professors faculties you will see who are really doing great or uh, even like john shulman from open ai you take their profile go to their phd thesis see what what kind of problems they were solving then you will understand the importance of learning fundamentals and yeah that's so very very well said and one of the points that you mentioned that if you take this op- uh, models which are readily available it won't be the case that this models will work for your industrial use case you may have to do some tuning some changes on top of it and you won't be able to do if you if your fundamentals are not correct yes 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 Even, exactly yeah and fundamental should not be just statistical or mathematical that i want to emphasize that does not mean that it has to be only mathematical but even in coding also things should be very clear crystal clear right. okay this is what's right. happening how can we parallelize it right that is also a big contribution right. that yeah. also need yeah if chat gpt is giving you a code what code is it giving what is it doing what is exactly. that and and I, and also I, i i remember that you you made a very good blog uh, please correct me if i am wrong when when we were doing it it it's on like how do we parallelize in cuda right and how we can make things faster that needs a lot of understanding right we cannot just use in like just nvidia's uh, collabs google collab and blindly do it needs a good understanding how you put things into different uh, clusters and how do you do at these things so this this is very important like these are also very fundamental contributions if you can do in diffusion model if you can let's say improve diffusion that are very valuable contributions is absolutely and more from industry so i think both this understanding things will happen once you go fundamental not, not beyond like not in a superficial level which i am also learning but i want to m- motivate that and to people exactly exactly and what happens sometimes while while i take interviews for industries i see that people have this deep q learning projects game projects but i still check for are there fundamentals on linear regression uh, clear or not do they know why the assumptions of linear regression exist at the first place yes. so yes. even most sophisticated algorithms are based are built on fundamentals and if your fundamentals yes. are clear then the sophisticated models also you can easily learn and know about it yes 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 exactly like uh, there is and there is no there is no contradiction to this there is there can be no contradictions yeah no to substitute point. to fun- strong fundamentals <laughs> yes yes there is no substitute and also like it is no, like because things are happening and there is a fast pace it need not be that you have to do so- everything today 
right? But but at least you appreciate this fact you, because some people are telling you at least acknowledge this fact and keep on doing parallelly. Right. It's not like we have to do today, right? But at least one should acknowledge and do not deny that oh, it's not needed. Yeah, exactly. Why do we need packages? Exactly. If, if your one LLM project is going on, keep one track for fundamentals as well. <laughs> And also as a motivation, as I said, like you take any big researcher yes. who is doing great research, just go to their PhD thesis or go to their PhD studies and see what has they worked on, mm-hmm. because because uh, like hyped up things were always there, <laughs> like throughout your life it will be there. So what were they doing is very important to see. Mm, awesome. So sort of the thanks a lot for your time. I enjoyed it a lot. This was the first episode where I didn't want it to end. I have still I have so many things to discuss. And what I liked about uh, this discussion was it was a mixture of theoretical, practical, and some technical stuff. And uh, thanks for your time. Let's have more such sessions in future as well. Audience has sure, sure. to learn from you. <laughs> I hope there is something I can contribute to the community. I feel that. Uh, that i have gained a lot from this open source community and i always keep on trying through through this google developer thing or different this kind of things and i i really appreciate that you are doing this and i have seen some of your videos where you are explaining some cons, complex ml concepts into simple th- terms i i really feel that at least coming from any it, it is very very important that because you have also ha- have a very strong background as well as you have done some good experience in industries so people like you should should be motivated more uh, at least to to help the learners to understand why they should join this field and then only we can progress faster and better i think yeah definitely definitely thanks thanks for thanks for your time bye thanks for the yeah bye